Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are jumping on the Geometry Nodes bandwagon and creating condensation. This is going to be a quick and dirty one so it shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes unless your system doesn't throw you in lag hell. Let's get started. Let us purge the default cube and get in a cylinder. This is more reminiscent of a glass or bottle surface so why not. Before going anywhere just go into edit mode and add in a couple of loop cuts. This is to get more faces to apply material to later on. Now we need to set up a couple of more things before jumping onto geometry nodes. We didn't want to go back and forth a hundred times later. Shift A to add a UV sphere and get it out of the way. Name it water drop or something. We are going to use this to instance all over the geometry. Duplicate it and deform this one in edit mode to look like a drop at the end of a water tray and that is what we are going to use it as. We need to add one more thing. Shift A and add a Bezier curve because we are going to use it to make those trails. Tap to go into edit mode, A to select all and X to delete the vertices. Don't worry we are going to draw custom trails later on. Now one final thing before jumping into geometry nodes and that is the material setup. Nothing too hard. Select one of the drops and create a water material. Color white, roughness 0, transmission full and IOR 1.33. Same material for the trail drop. Let's just change the engine to cycles while we are at it. Now, really the final thing, setting the material for the frost itself. I am doing this for a metal but you can adapt it to suit your requirement and taste. Split the window and open the shader editor, end to get rid of the right window. Create a new material which will be clean. Give it a good color. Decrease the roughness. And metal it to 1. Now that is a clean metal. To get frost on it, basically replicate that. Copy it and rename it to frosted. To see the effects, get rid of the clean one from this object. In the frosted material shader, bring in a noise texture. Ctrl T to get the necessary coordinate nodes thanks to Node Wrangler. Connect object to vector rather than generated. Attach a color ramp to the factor output. Bring in the white level. Push the detail all the way up and increase the roughness a bit. Now when you plug the color into roughness, you should see your frosted material. You can tweak the values as you feel like and make it better. As I said, this is the quick and dirty version. Now we are finally ready to go into geometry nodes. Create a new geometry node and before anything, add in a join geometry node because we are uniters, not dividers. Ha, ah, just kidding. Just wait a few minutes and you will see. Let's work on small bubbles. Drag out and find distribute points on faces node. From the point attach an instance on points node. Also change distribution from random to poison disk if you want to control the intersection of the bubbles. Density max controls the number of points you have on your geometry. Just get in an object info node. Select your water drop and plug geometry to the instance. Also change the scale, something like 0.03. Connect instances to join geometry node and voila. Increase the density and there we have condensation. Just to spice things up, get a random value node and let the min be 0 0.01 and max be 0 
plug that to scale and now it looks a bit better. Too much on the top? Let's control how high or low we want it to spread using selection. For that, we need to get the position of the points. Look for position node and drag out a separate XYZ node out of it. If you are not getting anything when you are dragging out, it is because you are using some version of Blender 3.0. I am using 3.1 beta just so that I can use this convenience. Anyway, I got sidetracked. Look for the math node. Now, if z of any point is less than a certain threshold, we want that. Similarly, if the z of any point is greater than a certain threshold, we want that as well. And we need to add these two conditions together, for which we will use a boolean AND node. Now plug the result into selection. You just purged every damn point. Not really. Control the height using the two threshold values. Cool trick, right? We can't control our life, so let's control these points. Once you have that, let's just go ahead and delete everything. Well, not exactly everything. What I mean is to get those water drop trails and delete the points around that. To get the trails, get in an object info node and select the bezier curve. Now this curve is going to give us a trail. Cannot use the curve as it is, so convert to mesh using curve to mesh. What we get is basically a set of points and we need the distance from these points. For that, get a geometry proximity node. But proximity to what? Faces? No, points. We are not done. It wants a source position. This is basically the position of all those bubbles we have distributed before. Just plug in a position node and it should do the trick. We need the distance between points in the trail curve and the bubbles, so take that distance and plug it into a math node. Now if that distance is less than a certain threshold, then delete the points. Let's just make the threshold a bit small. Now what do you want to delete? Geometry obviously. So search for a delete geometry node and plug it to the bubble instances node. It goes ahead and deletes everything. But we need to delete the instances and not points so change that to instance. It is blatantly asking us to select the points so we bring in the output of our less than and plug it into the selection. What happens? Nothing? How much more lazy can we be, expecting stuff to happen without even doing anything? We need to make the curve. So select your Bezier curve from the scene collection here and hit tab to go into edit mode. Click draw on surface to draw on the cylinder and change Bezier to poly to get a lot of points. Now pro tip, draw from bottom to top and not top to bottom. This is so that we can use the first point of contact as the location where we want our trail water drop to be. So something like that. See? Magic. Let's just do one more. Once you're done, get out of the edit mode and you can hide the curve to not see it drawn on the cylinder. Click on the cylinder to bring back the geometry nodes and now you can adjust the threshold even more. That looks cool. Time to make a big thick trail droplet at the end. Use the same Bezier curve for information and convert it into points. How many points do we need? Just one. What do we do with the points? Instance geometry on it as always. Instance what? The trail drop. So just duplicate this object info and select the drop. Plug that into instance. Cool, we don't see anything because it is not connected. Drag the instance output and plug it into join geometry. Wow, way too thick water drops. Get in a random value and adjust as per your taste. Plug that into scale.
looks good one final thing the material for the material the process is actually quite simple we can use the selection from the bezier curve which we have already set up to drive which section needs what material so get an ascent material node and duplicate it along the line select the first one as frosted and the second one as clean if you still remember what i'm talking about now use the criteria to drive the selection of the clean material see beauty well not quite it is happening because we don't have enough subdivisions look for subdivision surface node and plug that before the materials increase the number to get better results too high a number and your system would be blowing smoke on your face like a vaping machine five works for me this is what it looks like when it is quick and dirty if you tweak it a bit more it can look like this tweak it a bit more and light it up and it can look like this don't forget to like the video if it was helpful and subscribe to the channel for more such content. See you again in the next one. Have a great day.